This is ABC 7 News at 7. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Rabies is endemic in the state of Florida. That means it's always in the animal population. Sarasota on alert. Health officials are confirming reports of rabies in our area after a bobcat forced its way into a Northport home and attacked. But why did the victims have to go to multiple hospitals to get treated? And what do you need to know to protect your pets and loved ones from the threat of rabies? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the rabies alert coming up, but first, our top seven stories at 7. Add Fort Lauderdale to the ever-growing list of American communities that have become scenes of senseless mass shootings and death. Today, it was at Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Five people are dead, 13 injured. When a gunman opened fire in a baggage claim area, the terminal was a scene of chaos, thousands of passengers escaping the building to the tarmac outside. The suspect, a Puerto Rican man who is a member of the Alaskan National Guard. Governor Rick Scott is vowing to seek justice. Witnesses describe the scene. Everybody assumed they up there, they were safe. And then, bam, 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 bam and everybody just started running for the doors. So people running away from Terminal 2 um, and police arriving. Whoever is responsible will be held accountable to the full extent of the law. The suspect is known to the FBI. He showed up at the FBI office in Alaska several months ago saying he was hearing voices in his head, some telling him to join ISIS. Now the Northport, where a man is recovering after a roadside shooting. It took place on US 41 at the intersection with River Road just after 7 a.m. Investigators are still trying to determine what happened, but say two men were pulled over in a turn lane at, at the intersection. The victim is now in stable condition. We're un unsure if these two parties knew one another uh, or if it was completely uh, separate. We, we, we don't know their relationship, so we want to be careful with what we call this. Right now, it's simply a shooting investigation, and we want to get as much information as possible. No arrests have been made at this time. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Sarasota County's Sheriff's Office. Statewide, 2016 saw nearly a 40% spike in the number of crashes related to Florida's move over law. Florida law requires drivers to move over a lane if possible for law enforcement, emergency or service vehicles. If you can't move over, the alternative is to slow down. In 2015, there were 61 crashes by those violating the law. In 2016, that number jumped to 204. Florida Highway Patrol attributes many incidents to distracted or impaired driving. It is of paramount concern to us that the public understands how dangerous it is out there while working on the interstate. Only three of those crashes happened in Sarasota and Manatee counties. The others were concentrated in other parts of the state. A Sarasota-based circus operator who faced charges from a deadly tent collapse in New Hampshire has agreed to a plea deal. Walker International Events is agreeing to pay federal fines and settle lawsuits Previously, the company pleaded not guilty to a felony charge of operating without a license. The tent collapse happened at a fairground in 2015, killing a father and his six-year-old daughter. NIMBY alert, a not-in-my-backyard controversy is brewing in eastern Sarasota County. TST Ventures wants to build a recycling and waste transfer facility, but some nearby residents and businesses, business owners say no way. The project would be on 12 acres near Palmer Boulevard and Apex Road. Last night at a public workshop, uh, it was held with just one day notice. It made me very upset. I've been here since 1963. Three grew up just down the road, and I know this as nature and celery fields and vegetables were around here all the time. And that's what I'd like to see is have nature stay here somewhat. There's too much concrete. We reached out to TST Ventures, but we're told no comment. You don't hear this often from Sarasota County Commissioner Susan Chapman very often, let alone most politicians. An apology. Chapman is apologizing for an email she sent to city officials calling for ambulances to be ticketed for driving on Orange Avenue near Sarasota Memorial Hospital, which happens to be near her home. Chapman made the apology on the Maverick and Lulu in the morning show on 92.1 FM 
after some serious blowback to her comments. We've all heard about the email just in the last few days. And of course, you know, it's just sort of shocking. You don't expect to see uh, communications like that from elected officials um, that, that actually suggest something like, you know, ticketing an ambulance for going through a neighborhood. It's just kind of bizarre. Chapman says it was a stupid comment and that she will seek to understand the issue better. You don't see, see this uh, every year. The state Supreme Court is issuing a rare mea culpa for a mistaken release of rulings. The court is rescinding an order barring prosecutors from seeking the death penalty in capital cases. State corrections officials are also adopting a new lethal injection procedure that includes a drug never used before for executions. Both decisions are likely to spur legal challenges. It's not uh, a question of uh, support or opposition to capital punishment, but it's it's uh, emphasizing the importance of focusing upon the process, reviewing the entire process. Last year, Florida Supreme Court ruled a jury must reach a unanimous decision to sentence someone to death. It is music on Main in downtown Lakewood Ranch tonight. Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan joins us live with a first check on our weather. Bob. I got to tell you, we had a few light droplets coming down here. Nothing bad. People still out dancing despite the little sprinkles right now. And even the dogs are out here having a great time, too. The music has stopped. I'll tell you, people just coming out here and enjoying. Uh, there's a rescue right here. What's this one's name? This one's name. Oh, she's going to get pulled away. Hi, Rio. How are you? Oh, I like, I like your collar. Very nice. We got Max, too. Max the rescue right there. We love Max. And there's Vinny. Hey, Vinny. Vinny. What's this one? Merlin. Merlin. They're all here. The dog days of summer, right? It's warm enough for the upper 70s today. Uh, just a little bit of light rainfall. They're going to be a little bit colder tomorrow night as the summer moves on. 70 degrees right now. Some light rain falling at the Sarasota Braden Airport. And we'll move around to the next graphic there. You'll see winds out of the south, southeast at 6. The radar picture showing some heavier rainfall down to our south and to the north. We're kind of stuck in between right here. That's good news uh, for the soul sensation, the band playing right now. Uh, lightning strikes, no lightning around here right now. All is quiet. And we'll stay that way through this evening. We'll zero in on that rain and see right now nothing going on as far as heavy rainfall here, but there are some heavier showers uh, down to our south near Venice and Osprey and Nokomis. But you can see Lakewood Ranch good to go temporarily, uh, but we will see this light rainfall at least for the next hour or so, and then maybe some heavier stuff later on after the concert is over or the music on Main, if you will. How are you? Yeah, I, I tell you what, uh, no chance of any rough weather here this evening. Different story, though, during the morning hours on Saturday. Well, more on that coming up in a few minutes. Back to you, Alan. All right, Bob. Still to come, endemic to our area, rabies is already present on the Sun Coast, but what triggers an alert and what precautions should you take? The details when we return. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Is a debt beating you down? You need a discipline. You need the Debt Ninja. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS, you could be facing wage garnishments, levies, liens, property seizure, cancellation of business license, closure of business. The Debt Ninja fights your IRS debt. That's why you need the Debt Ninja. The Debt Ninja has found the best companies in the country who are on your side to fight debt. Want to learn if you qualify for the IRS Financial Hardship Program? Stop the IRS from garnishing your wages. Even if your bank account is been seized, if you have undeclared taxes, if you have existing IRS debt, it's not too late to call, so grab your phone now. Call the Debt Ninja at 800-945-0083. That's 800-945-0083. Settle your IRS debt to get the power of the Debt Ninja. Dial this number now, 800-945-0083. 
Sarasota Institute of Lifetime Learning begins its 46th season on Monday, January 9th in Sarasota, Venice, and Lakewood Ranch. Meet Blair Tyndall, author of Mozart in the Jungle on Monday, January 9th, and information and intelligence expert Terry Roberts on Tuesday, January 10th. 72 Global Issues lectures by renowned experts, 24 musical conversations with great performers. Tickets are on sale now. For more information and to purchase season tickets, visit sillsarasota.org. What does it mean when New South Window says Factory Direct? It means we have a factory. It means we eliminate the middleman. It means you get an award-winning, energy-efficient window at Factory Direct prices. Plus, New South Windows are made in Florida. Port Florida Home. By Florida workers, because we know Florida weather. Right now, buy two windows, get the third free, plus our lifetime warranty. New South Window, we manufacture, we install, we guarantee. Call now. The video is so incredible it has gone viral across the nation. A rabid bobcat barreled into a Northport family's home causing chaos. Now a rabies alert is in effect in our area. Christopher Branley joins us now with what we need to be concerned about. Christopher. Well, and this is not something you see every day. Bobcats are shy and normally stay away from humans, but as you will see, that is not always the case. Last Thursday, Karen Morse had her grandchildren staying over. All was normal until someone opened the front door to take the family dog for a walk. Right here is where the attack took place. And he came in through the house, climbed up on this chair all the way up, dropped down, and then went through the living room. The bobcat attacked the dog, leaving it with three puncture wounds. Eventually, the animal was trapped onto the lanai. Florida Fish and Wildlife was called out to retrieve the cat, but the officer got quite the surprise. Did you see his claws? Did you see his claws? No, no, no. Holy crap. It was very unnerving to have him jump up there. It was like he was almost to his chin, if not to his face. And then, you know, he, he bled. Both the officer and the dog had received injuries. At first, it seemed like the most they needed to worry about was the cuts. Florida Fish and Wildlife did not think this cat was rabid either because he looked very healthy. It may have looked healthy, but it wasn't. It became quickly apparent that the animal had rabies. Despite not being scratched, the whole family was sent to local hospitals to get the rabies shot. They did not have enough serum and vaccine for my son, so they sent him up to Lakewood Hospital. In the meantime, from Venice Hospital, they're sending myself and a grandson to Doctor's Hospital. The other daughter-in-law and grandson went to Sarasota Memorial. The family learned the hard way that hospitals do not keep much of the rabies serum on hand. Serum is very expensive, and so the hospitals keep a limited supply. Uh, you know, it's unusual to have a large group of people with a potential exposure at one time. The serum also has a shelf life. The family dog was up to date on its rabies shot and is recovering. When we posted the video on Facebook, some commenters raised serious concerns. One writing, I don't want to see a wildlife officer attacked, but they didn't seem very prepared to handle this. Hate to see any animal beat upon. Another asking why the officer wasn't wearing gloves and additional protection. Well, this bobcat has been euthanized. The only way to test an animal for rabies is to euthanize it and test the brain stem. As it turns out, rabies may be more common than you think. Rabies is endemic in the state of Florida. That means it's always in the animal population. The Florida Department of Health in Sarasota raised the rabies alert in the area as a result. Sarasota County Animal Services has set out traps around Venice and Northport to test other bobcats to see if the disease is spreading through the population. You know, wildlife is fun to look at, but if they exhibit strange behavior, uh, unusually friendly behavior, or if they approach you, move away from them. And health officials say you should not keep pet food outside, secure all your garbage containers, and keep a close eye on pets when outside. And if your pet is bitten by a wild animal, seek veterinary assistance immediately and contact the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. Christopher, uh, thank you. Uh, when we return, we'll speak with the Department of Health in Sarasota Memorial Hospital about what you need to know about rabies. We'll take it to the trapezoid. 
7, My Suncoast News. We're here for you. Conveniently watch ABC 7, My Suncoast News, wherever you are, through our live stream on our newly redesigned MySuncoast.com and the brand new ABC 7, My Suncoast app with improved features, including traffic maps and live radar. Now featuring dining discounts for your favorite Suncoast restaurants. Visit MySuncoast.com to stay up to date and click on the mobile tab to download the ABC 7, My Suncoast app for iOS and Android. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Joey Panic on Suncoast View. The musical Sister Act performs right here in the studio, plus red carpet recap from the Golden Globes and Drunken Poet in the Kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Attention small business owners. Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes. You're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-658-3433. 800-658-3433. Robotic surgery is changing medicine. The robot has better vision than a human. You can see 10 times better magnification than the human eye, but it takes a human eye to run the machine. In fact, it takes multiple human eyes to treat a patient. We've perfected the team, we've perfected the procedure, and the more experienced the team, the better the quality outcome. That will look great on you. Every time you shop here, you have the power to change lives. Does she work here? No, she's just a proud supporter of Goodwill. Welcome back. Is rabies something that we should be worried about? According to the Florida Department of Health, 59 animal rabies cases were reported in our state last year. Sarasota County is one of only four counties to have four or more individual cases. Animals carrying the virus in our area include deer, bats, raccoons, and now bobcats. Joining us for more on rabies here on the Sun Coast is Tom Higginbotham, Administrator, Administrator of the Environmental Health for Sarasota's branch of the Florida Department of Health, Dr. Brian Garby, an emergency care physician at Sarasota Memorial Hospital, and ABC7 South County reporter Christopher Brantley. Christopher, I'm actually going to start with you because you talk to the, that family and you don't see anything like that every, every day. No, you don't. And they were remarking that this is kind of a, an unusual circumstance. They were all gathering for Christmas and they certainly have a story to tell uh, from this Christmas. But they all kept up their spirits. Um, none of them were scratched. There was one possibility that one of the grandchildren got a scratch, although they thought the scratch might have been from a previous incident. Um, so I think they kept their spirits up largely because they didn't get scratched. So they did get the shot. Well, they traumatized. But they were pretty scared, that's for sure. And, and the grandmother, Karen Morse, told us she's going to think really uh, hard before she opens her front door. She lives right on the back of a preserve. That's why they think the bobcat came out. Still, and you know, if you live on, on the edge of a preserve, you, you see wild animals. That's kind of what, what you're looking for when, when you uh, live you know, near wetlands and, and so forth. But traditionally, when we think of rabies, we used to think of rabies do dogs. We often think of raccoons, bats, but not necessarily bobcats. Are, are things changing? Well, I don't think that things are changing. We do see that happen from time to time into bobcats and foxes. So obviously this bobcat came into contact with, with something that already had rabies. It could have happened weeks ago, but finally manifested uh, when unfortunately this attack took place. And as the woman there said, what was interesting is it, it, it looked like a healthy animal. Uh, so you can't necessarily tell by appearances whether an animal is infected with rabies or not. It depends on how far the disease has progressed. But if you have an animal that is acting unusual, and bobcats typically will avoid people. So you had a bobcat run into a house chasing a dog. Unusual. That's very unusual. That is a red flag right there. 
they were very smart to get that uh, bobcat out onto the lanai, separated from the rest of the family, and call fish and wildlife. And, and what, what some people, you know, commented uh, as uh, Christopher uh, mentioned in this story, they were. They, the, the video is disturbing mm -hmm. uh, in terms of how officers had to uh, try to contain the, the animal. Were they prepared for that? Is there anything other that, that they could or should have done? Well, you know, that doesn't happen every day. So in hindsight, certainly they may have wanted to be more prepared. Um, in the future, I think that they will be. <laughs> and I think that they'll also probably want to get some, uh, get their uh, vaccinations, their pre-exposure vaccination so they don't have to go through the more painful shots after exposure. Doctor, how often do you see cases uh, coming into your emergency room? Well, we don't really see cases of rabies per se. What we see are cases of possible exposure. And I'd say we see you know, three to five per year anyway, maybe more. Um, these are all reported to the health department. And uh, the exposures differ uh, between what we think are trivial exposures, such as uh, maybe just exposure to uh, petting an animal that maybe later people felt was rabid, uh, to anything like a, a tearing of the skin or exposure of mucous membranes to fluid from the animal, which is obviously a so totally different situation. you can be exposed to a rabid animal, but not necessarily get the virus. Correct. Uh, but but still, you have to take those precautions. And, right. And I have a question because they, they said the bobcat urinated all over the living room of the home, mm -hmm. then through the home, and that was largely the reason the family decided to get their shots. Can you get the the rabies shot uh, the rabies through uh, the fluid? Well, you, you can, but not through intact skin. But you know, you're dealing with kids in the family, and maybe they were exposed to the fluid and put their hands in their mouth around their eyes and those can certainly be portals of entry. Mm -hmm. Now the, the, the fact is the consequences of contracting rabies can be very severe and in this case there were cuts, uh, the dog got, th got bit. Uh, for humans what could happen? Well it, the worst case scenario is that uh, you contract a fatal encephalitis or infection of the central nervous How system. How does that happen? Well, if you have documented rabies, uh, unfortunately, if you, if you get an a, uh, advanced case of rabies untreated, it's pretty much fatal. Uh, there have been, uh, I think, two reported cases of people with uh, known uh, documented uh, CNS rabies that have survived. One was a girl in Wisconsin back in 2004. Another was a young girl uh, in Colombia, uh, South, uh, South America. And, but those are the exceptions to the rule. And Christopher, everyone in that house got shots? Mm -hmm. Everybody got the shots. The dog had, had its preemptive uh, rabies shot, as all dogs are supposed to have. The family got all the shots uh, they needed. Um, and so far, as I understand it, nobody is ill or anything. Okay, we are just getting started. There's more in our discussion coming up, along with a check on our forecast. So back in a moment. Too much for your cable or satellite TV? The U.S. government passed a bill mandating free over-the-air digital transmission of all broadcast network television channels. That means with the new TV Freeway digital antenna, you can get free HD programming from your favorite broadcast networks 24-7 without a bill. You just plug it into the back of your TV and start watching all of your favorite broadcast programs for free. There are no contracts to sign, no hidden fees, and no monthly fees. Just free HD broadcast TV. Take it with you anywhere. Call or go online now to get your TV freeway stick for the incredibly low price of only $14.99. But wait, call or click now and you can get a second TV freeway stick for a second TV. Just pay a separate fee. But you have to order right now. Call 1-800-809-5196 to get your TV freeway. Call now or go to tvfreeway.com. So call 1-800-809-5196. This offer's not in any store. Call now. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. 
Our discussion of rabies continues in a moment, but first let's get a check on our forecast from Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan, who is live at Music on Main in Lakewood Ranch. Bob. Alan, music on Main, a little bit damp, but not bad enough to uh, cause a cancellation. People are out still dancing. You can see without umbrellas. Some people have umbrellas. Uh, it's coming down just a little bit now and again. Now, the heaviest rain by far, well to the east. You're looking at the group Soul Sensations, and I'll tell you, they are good. Uh, they've got people up there dancing in a little bit of rain. Dancing in the rain. That's right, right here at Lakewood Ranch, music on Main. Let's go to the graphics and show you what's been happening today. Again, we've had some clouds around occasionally this afternoon and then the light rain this evening light to moderate rainfall already being felt across parts of the sun coast right out here Lakewood Ranch just a little bit of a spittle really if you will uh, the heaviest rain by far has been to the north of us we've had some moderate rainfall in northwest Bradenton also down south down to Venice and Osprey uh, some moderate heavy rainfall there as it makes its way off toward the northeast at around 10 miles an hour. Live look at the radar showing you the heaviest rain by far offshore with some light rainfall right here at Lakewood Ranch. As we move through the maps, you will see again the uh, light rainfall in the green uh, covering much of, uh, much of Manatee County at this hour. Uh, with the heaviest rain down uh, uh, south. Let's uh, continue on with the graphics and we'll show you as we progress as far as rainfall totals go over the upcoming 24 hours. We are expecting up to uh, an inch and a half in some areas, but generally about a half inch of rainfall anticipated across most of the area. Well, the current conditions, we have some light rain falling here, 70 degrees. The dew point is at 63. So rather comfortable despite the little rain that we're getting here. Band still playing along right now. And 78, you can say goodbye to the 70s. The high today was 78 degrees, well above the average of 71. Temperatures will fall throughout the afternoon on Saturday. And as far as rainfall totals go, well, none to show you today, but we'll see that up to an inch and a half tomorrow at this time. Weather headlines read like this. Again, showers now, but storms. We're talking big storms possibly late tonight, more so during the morning hours on Saturday. The chance of any severe weather is small at this point, and we are looking for very cold air to move in tomorrow night with wind chills in the 30s on Sunday morning, temperatures already starting to fall in the panhandle at 41 degrees there, 78 in Miami, and temperatures near the coast, low 70s, upper 60s in places like Sebring, as well as into Lake Placid. Well, the big story is this winter storm down south causing snow problems, freezing rain and sleet from Louisiana stretching through Mississippi, Alabama. The northeast, it's not the snow, it's the extreme cold that has moved in across much of the eastern United States. Uh, you can see the temperatures in the single digits over the northern Plains states. If we jump ahead to the forecast, the marine forecast, you will see small craft advisories are in effect for coastal waters as winds will be strong and they'll be out of the uh, west turning to the northwest at around 20 to 25 uh, knots at times. The UV index at two. Let's go skip right to the seven day if we can. We'll show you what's going to be happening over the upcoming days. We are looking for a uh, slight chance for showers uh, late tomorrow afternoon, but most of the heavy rain will be over by then. Much colder air moving in, much colder air moving in on Sunday. Highs only in the upper 50s, but not tonight. We're just enjoying, again, the soul sensation. Alan will be right back after this. Get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 1-800-764-8708. That's 1-800-764-8708.
What does it mean when New South Window says Factory Direct? It means we have a factory. It means we eliminate the middleman. It means you get an award-winning, energy-efficient window at factory direct prices. Plus, New South windows are made in Florida. Port Florida home. Bye, Florida workers, because we know Florida weather. Right now, buy two windows. Get the third free, plus our lifetime warranty. New South window. We manufacture. We install. We guarantee. Call now. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are discussing a recent rabies alert on the Sun Coast and what you need to know about the virus. Our guests tonight are Tom Higginbotham of the Sarasota branch of the Florida Department of Health, Dr. Brian Garber, Garby, I'm sorry, of Sarasota Memorial Hospital and, and ABC7 reporter Christopher Brantley. So this incident happens. Christopher, what happens to the family in terms of getting treatment? Uh, they were sent to Venice Regional Hospital, first of all, to get the rabies shot found out that Venice Regional didn't have enough of the serum to go around and so they basically spread the family out to four different hospitals from Venice Regional, Lakewood Ranch, Doctors Hospital and Sarasota Memorial Tom, Hospital. were you involved in that? I was not. I was not involved until the second individual was attacked. And so here's the thing. Uh, people may wonder going to Venice Regional, going to, uh, why, why did the family have to go in four different directions? Well, it's very unusual to have this number of people with a potential exposure. Uh, some of the smaller hospitals, due to the expense of the uh, serum, may not keep as much on as uh, you know, keep as much on hand as you would think, because you typically don't have four, five, six people needing the shot at once. Wow. So, Dr. Garvey, Sarasota Memorial Hospital has sufficient quantities of, of the serum. Yes. Um, I explain to us why it's so expensive and the shelf life, which also makes it difficult for smaller hospitals to, to keep it in stock. Well, the, there, there are two different shots that are given. The, there's a, uh, a human uh, immunoglobulin that's given, and uh, that, that provides what we call passive immunity to the, um, to the victim. In other words, it, it inactivates the rabies virus. The, um, that immunoglobulin is generally injected around the site of the bite, Usually it's on the hand. And then the, um, the re half of it's injected around the bite. The remainder of the immunoglobulin is directed, injected in the shoulder, usually in the same side. Then the person needs to undergo vaccination. So there's a series of four vaccinations. The expensive part's really the immunoglobulin. Well, I want to get to the expensive part, but mm -hmm. I remember growing up, uh, the, everyone's fear is that if you had to get rabies shots, it's like very painful, it's in your, your abdomen, mm -hmm. uh, but that's not the case anymore? Correct, it's given the, the uh, now the immunoglobulin is still given at the site of the bite, but the other shots are given in the deltoid muscle up in the upper arm. And, and it's very expensive. Uh, well. In the U.S., the average cost of treatment runs about $1,500 for the, the uh, immunoglobulin and then the, f the series of four vaccinations that follow. Covered by insurance, Christopher? I'm told the family, the, the grandchildren, the, the children were all covered by their insurance, but I was told by Karen Morse that her insurance, that her Medicaid, did not cover it, and she said it was about a $3,000 bill. Why would that be? I mean, I know we're not experts on, on Medicaid, but w why wouldn't Medicaid cover it? Well, you'd probably have to ask the <laughs> Medicaid <laughs> people. Uh, you know, uh, Tom, um, That's a good question. You know, we talked about earlier that Florida is amongst the states probably because of all the wildlife we have around here and the size of the state that uh, there are more cases in, in Florida than elsewhere. Uh, but is it different in other parts of the country, let alone other parts of the world? Well, certainly, uh, you have uh, a, a lot more occurrence of rabies in other parts of the world where public health hasn't been working on it as long as it has been in this country. And one statistic that's important to note, that the last time a human being acquired rabies in the state of Florida was in 1948. That individual died because he refused treatment. So before then, you have to go back into the earlier part of the 20th century. So since then, we have prevented rabies deaths in the state of Florida with the exception of people that came here from other locations, other countries, and in one case an individual who came from North Carolina died of rabies. So because, they, because they were infected elsewhere? Because they were infected elsewhere, right. yes. Now, when you have the animals out there who are infected with rabies, uh, are you concerned of, you know, about the spread of it amongst animals, amounts, uh, amongst animals who may be 
going from one area to another? Uh, what is preventing uh, the rabies from, from basically you know, just exploding in the environment? Well, uh, being that rabies, once an animal starts to show symptoms, uh, as we've said, it will die pretty quickly. How quickly? Uh, with less than a week, uh, e even uh, in a, within a few days. That's a good thing. We're glad that the virus will kill them quickly. Now, uh, animals could take advantage of other animals that are sickly and aren't able to get away, and that could be, I'm surmi surmising a little bit, but that could be the case with this particular bobcat. May have come across a raccoon, which is the largest reservoir for rabies in the state, and made an easy feed. Doctor, uh, what advice can you give people who are watching this right now if they encounter uh, an animal that could have been exposed to rabies? Because nobody's going to willingly or wants to go through those shots at that expense. So, uh, what are the do's and the don'ts? Well. Number one is to avoid contact with any animal that may be acting strangely or aggressively. Certainly, I wouldn't approach any wild animal, uh, especially if they're coming towards you. I'd run the other way as quick as I could. Uh, if you happen to be scratched or uh, have any sort of uh, interruption of your skin surface or exposure of any of your mucous membranes to, the, say, the saliva of the animal, uh, you definitely uh, should seek treatment for that. Uh, Ideally, you would uh, have the animal quarantined uh, if you can locate a wildlife officer or call the Florida Fish and Game Service or Wildlife Service to get that animal and quarantine him. That would be a big help in, in determining whether or not, number one, if this animal is rabid and, and, and may help you avoid some of the, uh, the necessary treatment. You know, the difficulty, uh, in, uh, Christopher, is I know even in my no own neighborhood, uh, you know, sometimes there are uh, uh, you know, cats out there who have no homes and you have kids who think the cats are cute uh, and, and you want to take care of them, um, but people don't always understand there are dangers out there that uh, they and their children have to be aware of. And full disclosure, I live only about a mile away from this and I've seen bobcats wandering through my neighborhood before um, and, and pretty much all down River Road if you live down River Road. Um, it, the tendency is you want to pet a, a, an animal you know, who doesn't love to, to pet a cat or a dog? Um, you know, I think people just need to be really careful uh, because if the, the animal is wild, you don't know what animal it is, it's always best to perhaps stay away. And, and Tom, I would imagine another difficulty would be is that if, if you s suspect or fear that your dog or cat that you own could have been exposed because then you're, you're, you're adding into the mix people's emotional ties to, to their animals and uh, they may not want to uh, think that uh, this could cause uh, their animal to, to be put down. That's why it is imperative that everybody get their pets vaccinated. That's the number one way to prevent them from coming down with rabies. If they are attacked by a known rabbit animal, even if they are current on their shots, we recommend a booster shot immediately afterwards. I don't think people know that. They should. Please know that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get your animals vaccinated, including cats. State law as of 1994 has required that cats be vaccinated as well. In the early part of the 20th century, the problem was dogs. Now we're seeing more cats because of feral populations. People love cats. They would like to take care of them. But even if they get vaccinated once through various programs, you don't know what's going to happen in two or three years. I could uh, be proud to report to you that the cone dog Scruffy got his, uh, his uh, vaccination just uh, last week or the week before. Good job. All right. Let's take a quick break. When we return, we'll have final thoughts from our guests, plus what some of our viewers are saying about sweeping races for the Sarasota County School District. My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, step-by-step -step videos, and Suncoast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySuncoast.com slash dining. ABC 7 News at 7 weeknights. Is your mop a dirty, disgusting mess? 
you need the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System, the only mop and bucket that spins the dirt away. A system that cleans practically anything and everything with super absorbent microfiber. Dip it in the washer side and the mess releases into the bucket. Then place it in the dryer side and push on the pedal. You get a clean mop head that's practically dry and ready for more. And your hands will never again touch a dirty, disgusting mop. The heads are washable and reusable. Get the Hurricane 360 Spin Mop System for just two payments of $19.99. You'll also get a Sticky Buddy, the reusable sticky roller that picks up pet hair and lint and washes clean in seconds. You can take advantage of our two-for-one pick-it-up special and get a second Spin Mop set. Just pay additional shipping and fee. And we'll upgrade you to free priority handling. So don't wait. Order now. Call 1-800-394-1524 to get your Hurricane Spin Mop double offer. So hurry and call 1-800-394-1524. Call now. Don't miss the 19th annual Thunder by the Bay Motorcycle Festival, January 5th through the 8th, to benefit Suncoast Charities for Children. This year's festival welcomes special guest Blue Oyster Cult to the premier sports campus at Lakewood Ranch on January 8th at 4 p.m. Admission is free. Festival events include a sporting clay tournament, kickoff party, welcome Thunder event, cruise for cash, charity motorcycle ride, and a two-day rockin' and riding at the ranch festival featuring vendors, live music, a taste of Thunder area, and more. VIP tickets are available. For tickets and info, visit thunderbythebay.org. Welcome back. What do you need to know about rabies? Could it be a threat to your family or your pets? Our guests join us now for final thoughts. Christopher, what do you take away from this story? Well, this isn't something we see very often. We especially don't see it caught on camera. And, and props to the, to the grandchild for being able to keep his cool and film the whole thing to, to show what happened. Um, but, you know, I think this is really a wake-up call for folks to be extra careful, especially if they live close to a, a, a woodsy area. This woman lived right off a of preserve. And it raises the point, make sure your, your animals are vaccinated and make sure that you take precautions, even if you haven't been scratched, even if you've been around an animal that does have rabies, it's important. And, and doctor, what is your takeaway? Did, uh, is it so crucial that if you are exposed or your family is exposed to, to seek medical treatment just as, as, as fast as you can, what, what should you do first? Well, that's true. I, I really think the best thing, the best cure is prevention. And, uh, but if you are exposed, and particularly if there's any broken skin at all, or if you're in doubt, the number one thing you should do is decontaminate the site quickly, flush How? it with water. Uh, you can use a dilute betadine solution if you have that in the house, or just plain soap and water. That has been shown to dramatically decrease the risk of contracting rabies. And after that, obviously get to the nearest emergency care facility and get the proper treatment. I mean, should you stop to find out if that facility has the, the serum first before you go or just go? You know, I think you could just go there and, and they can direct you probably more quickly than you could yourself to a facility that may have the proper uh, vaccination. Uh, Tom, should we be concerned any more than usual about rabies right now? No, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. As I said, get your pets vaccinated. Don't keep food outside to draw wild animals and keep your garbage contained. And other thing I want to point out is that the Florida Department of Health in Sarasota County and Sarasota Memorial have plenty of uh, human uh, immunoglobulin and vaccination uh, in stock. And even if we ran out, we can get it within a day. There's plenty of it out there. People should not be concerned about that. And, and you know, we, we see bobcats, ha you know, in this case, uh, the number of, of species that are dealing with rabies right now, it's are not expanding or expanding? Uh, it looks like it's staying pretty static. I mean, we see it a little bit higher in one county and it will go down and increase a little bit in another. Okay. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers are saying about the pay raises for the Sarasota County School District. This week, the school board approved a 4% raise for all teachers, support staff, and administrators, bringing salaries back to pre-recession levels. Now, teachers will be offered a starting salary of $42,000 a year. Here's what some of you are saying about the decision. Elizabeth Hacker writes, it is still not enough. I do not know how people justify paying corporate executives hundreds of thousands of dollars and those who teach our children for 12 or more years get paid squat. Diana Dougherty writes, in regard to merit rate pay, school principals do know who their ineffective teachers are, but few are willing to put in the effort to take, it takes to remove them from their jobs. Instead, they put the blame on teachers' unions, saying their hands are tied. The problem with merit pay is that teacher evaluations are currently linked to significantly high test stakes 
test stakes. This doesn't effectively consider the impact of teaching students with special education needs, English language learners, and the impact of poverty, etc. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. And FYI, want to watch past roundtable discussions? They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. Thanks to our guests for being here tonight. Tom Higginbotham is Administrator of Environmental Health for the Sarasota Branch of the Florida Department of Health. Dr. Brian Garvey is Emergency Care Physician at Sarasota Memorial Hospital. And Christopher Brantley is our South County Reporter. When we return, we'll have a final look at your weather, plus an emotional farewell address for First Lady Michelle Obama. Find out why she was nearly brought to tears at the White House today. The details in our primetime headlines. door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I call Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions Now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Your primetime headlines are coming up in just a moment, but right now let's go out live to Lakewood Ranch where Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan has a final check on our forecast. Bob. And I got to tell you, the, uh, it's all over. Basically, a big shower came through here just about five minutes ago, and now it's starting to let up again. It's uh, been very light rainfall. And the band Soul Sensation did really a great job. Hopefully they'll come back and uh, play again because the people were digging it, even though it was raining very lightly for the last hour and 40 minutes or so. So we can only get to about 8 o'clock and then the heavy rainfall came. Titan radar picture showing the storms and showers really kind of blowing up now in the eastern Gulf of Mexico and right here along the Sun Coast from Manatee County southward th through Sarasota. The showers are moving off to the east at around 10 to 15 miles an hour. And we are anticipating the shower activity to continue to develop out ahead of a very strong cold front. And that cold front will eventually bring a lot of rainfall our way. You're starting to see that developing already in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, the uh, shower activity, not all that intense right now. And it looks like we'll see some thunderstorms, though, start to build later on tonight and throughout the morning on Saturday, producing some moderate to heavy rainfall at times. Now, and getting a look now as what's happening, uh, we're uh, looking at some shower activity still around, and that activity will continue to push off to the east at 10 to 15 miles an hour. And the uh, forecast is again looking uh, pretty uh, bleak as far as rainfall goes uh, for tonight and tomorrow, and then it should lessen somewhat by uh, midday tomorrow. So total accumulation, a uh, half inch to an inch and a half in some areas currently. We have rain at the Sarasota Brayton Airport. Still pretty mild, though, as far as the temperature goes. Uh, right around 70 degrees. And the 70 degree temperature will uh, stay pretty much right at 70 with dew points now into the upper 60s. The high today was 78 degrees. That's the last time we're going to see the 70s for some time, uh, at least for the next several days, as we look uh, at some colder air moving in. Uh, as far as the rainfall total goes, no rain to report uh, officially since uh, 6 o'clock, though we had some showers near the airport. As I mentioned, that rainfall total can get as high as about, oh, a half inch to an inch and a half in some areas. And as far as the latest goes, temperatures across the area 
uh, are dropping now into the upper 60s to low 70s, so still not too bad. They'll stay pretty much right there in the upper 60s to low 70s through oh, tomorrow morning, say around 12, and then they'll start to fall around. The headlines read like this. Showers right now, but bigger storms during the late night and the morning hours. Some of those storms could produce some moderate rainfall to heavy rain, some lightning strikes as well. Right now, we're not anticipating too much severe weather around. The chances for that happening very small at this point. Temperatures, well, temperatures are expected to be generally into the upper 60s to low 70s now along the Sun Coast. Those temperatures, again, will fall not too much throughout the overnight hours, but fall throughout the latter half of tomorrow. Let's get to the marine forecast and show you what's happening as far as the boating forecast is concerned. Bad news on that front. Small craft advisories are in effect. Winds will be picking up out of the west and eventually northwest up to 20 to 25 knots. Seas building up to 6 to 8 feet and uh, rough conditions out on the waters throughout Saturday and carrying over on into Sunday. Now, as the tides go there on the screen, the forecast looks like this. Uh, we get to the seven day, you'll see colder air, 59 for a high on Sunday, and then temperatures gradually warming back above average quickly uh, by Tuesday. We'll be back in the mid-70s, so pretty chilly weather uh, on uh, you know Saturday afternoon, Sunday, and Monday. Alan will be right back after this. Stick around. The Detoli Cancer Center, through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was and some additional cancers that were not found during the biopsy. I would recommend the Detoli Cancer Center. As a group of human beings, they are unbelievably great. Flooring Depot has been serving Sarasota and Manatee counties for over 20 years with the best products and installation. Flooring Depot offers carpet, tile, hardwood, and more. Before you buy, give us a try. Stop by our showroom or visit us on the web at bestvaluecarpet.com. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. I support Goodwill because when I donate or shop, I have the power. The power to change lives. Now for a look at your primetime headlines. U.S. intelligence agencies are officially releasing their findings on Russian interference in our presidential election. Just so happens it comes on the same day Congress confirms the results of the Electoral College. ABC's Karen Travers has the latest from Washington. The chair declares the joint session dissolved. And with that, it's official. Donald Trump is the winner of the presidential election. Congress certifying the Electoral College votes Friday in a joint session. Mr. President, I object because people are horrified by the overwhelming evidence. Of but like so much of this presidential campaign, it was not without drama. I object. House Democrats standing up nearly a dozen times to try and contest ballots. There is no debate. It is over. Uh. <laughs> And in New York, Trump and Vice President-elect Mike Pence getting briefed by top intelligence officials on their report on Russia's election cyber attacks. U.S. intelligence officials say the findings are clear. The cyber trails lead directly to the Kremlin and to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Despite his ongoing public skepticism, Trump said his briefing Friday was, quote, a constructive meeting and conversation. In a statement, Trump also pointed the finger at China and other countries, saying they're also trying to break through American cyber infrastructure. And with two weeks until he takes the oath of office, Trump defending his win, saying there was absolutely no effect on the outcome of the election, including the fact that there was no tampering whatsoever with voting machines. But it's notable that after his briefing, Donald Trump still did not publicly acknowledge or accept the intelligence community's consensus view that Russia engaged in cyber attacks in an attempt to interfere with the election. Karen Travers, ABC News, Washington. Remember the line, we're going to build a wall and Mexico will pay for it.
Well, Donald Trump is now asking Congress to pay for the wall and says Mexico can pay us back at some point in the future if Republican lawmakers go along. It would add nearly roughly $10 billion to a spending bill that needs to pass by late April to keep the government open, likely creating a showdown with Senate Democrats and the potential of a government shutdown. Florida Attorney General Pam Bondi isn't saying whether she would accept a position in the Trump administration. Bondi spoke to reporters at a news conference today in Tampa. She says she is happy in her job right now. I'm not going to discuss anything confidential, nor should anyone. I mean, nor should anyone in the Obama administration ever, ever, ever talk out of school, is what I say. Bondi is currently under investigation by a state prosecutor for her handling of a case involving Trump University. The Obama administration is de denying permits for energy companies to conduct surveys in the Atlantic Ocean. The move comes weeks the pr uh, after the president designated the bulk of U.S. owned waters in the Arctic and Atlantic Oceans as off limits for oil and gas drilling. Surveys use seismic air guns to map oil rich areas, a practice environmentalists say is dangerous to marine life. A tearful moment at the White House today as Michelle Obama made her final remarks as First Lady. Educators from around the country gathered in the East Room for the 2017 School Counselor of the Year event. During her time as First Lady, Michelle Obama has championed health and fitness initiatives in schools along with the need for post-secondary education. Thank you for everything you do for our kids and for our country. Being your first lady has been the greatest honor of my life, and I hope I've made you proud. This won't be her final public appearance. The first lady is scheduled to appear on tonight, the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon next Wednesday. The national unemployment rate is going up again, going up as the last job report of 2016 is released. U.S. employers added 156,000 jobs in December, capping a year of slower but solid hiring. Unemployment went up to 4.7 percent from a nine-year low of 4.6 percent. In 2016, hourly pay increased nearly 3 percent, suggesting low unemployment is forcing businesses to offer higher wages. SeaWorld says the killer whale that drowned a trainer in 2010 is now dead. In March, Tilcom's health began deteriorating after being diagnosed with a lung infection. The orca is linked to the deaths of three people, including a SeaWorld trainer who was dragged under the water. In the wake of the death, new safety procedures were put into place. Tilcom lived at SeaWorld Orlando for 25 years. It's estimated it was 36 years old. Orcas in the world have an average lifespan of 50 years. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.